So we're going to include our soccer players with the prayer to the beginning of the physics class and then do the one example. So here we are praying for them and for the rest. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the soccer team who's away in Ohio doing great things. And we pray, Lord, that you would help them to be able to have victories, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would cover them, keep them from injury. We thank you, Lord, that you give us this opportunity to be able to do various different things. And I pray, Lord, for all of our students. I pray, Lord, for their grades has been brought up as a prayer request that you would help them to do really well as we get ready to wrap up the quarter. And I pray, Lord, that you'll help everybody to understand this physics and be ready for their tests next week and just uh, help everyone to, um, to be able to do the things you've called them to do. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So... We're going to look at this one last problem in the chapter. And then after that, we're going to spend some time doing some work. But uh, you have this problem in front of you, so please make sure that you're ready to go. Have your calculator handy. And here's what we're going to do with this. So we have this airplane, and it's traveling 212 meters per second due north with respect to the ground. So the airplane, that's the net. That's what's happening as a result of what the wind is doing and as a result of what the airplane is doing on its own. So it's a combination. The wind is blowing 45 meters per second due northwest. And so our question then that would be an important thing for a pilot to know where to do would be what direction we're going to head the plane and then how fast the plane would have to be set uh, to be going in order to achieve this 212 meters per second due north. So on this we're going to start by um, making our resultant vector first. So our resultant vector is going to go which way in this? Uh, north. north. Okay, so our, our resultant vector is due north. So we'll start off with the result, even though it seems kind of backwards. We start with the result due north, and we want to take from that, that's 212, okay, now there's two things that go into that, there's what the wind's doing, and then there's also what the, uh, what the plane is doing on its own, because the last question, in what direction would you head the plane, and how fast is the plane, there's two things going in, so we'll start with the vector that we know, which is the wind, which is northwest. So which way is northwest? You can point. Okay, good. They're all pointing up and to the left. So up and to the left this way. How many degrees? 45. 45 degrees because it just says due northwest. So that means it's 45 degrees down here and it's 45 degrees up here. So we want to put in that 45 degrees in here. Okay, we have, this is our vector here, so this is f 45 meters per second going along with the 45 degrees. And so the planes part is the part, is this missing part that takes us from what the wind, if it was just the wind and for some reason it was suspended in air, it would just be, be blowing 45 meters per second this way. But what has to happen is that the plane has to actually be facing this way in order to counteract what the wind is doing and to get a heading, which direction it's going. We do have traditional north, south, west, east. Um, so this is our planes part, the airplane. And this is our wind, and we don't even care necessarily that we label it, but just so we have this. Now, definitely not drawn to scale because this 212 should be much longer, but it gives us triangles that we're able to work with. Um, now, it's an interesting thing. We could, I guess, technically use the law of cosines if we wanted to, but law of cosines is sometimes harder to remember, so... What I'd like to do on this one, because we need to get a direction for this. And so we need a right triangle involved in order to get a direction for this. So 
I see somebody thinking. Um, what are you thinking? Okay, sure. We could make a straight line at the top, but I'm going to be a little radical here. I'm going to make a straight line in the middle, okay? Because in the middle, we can have this straight line, and then we end up with a triangle that we have enough parts of that we can find some sides, and we can work our way up to here, and we can find our theta right in here. And that's going to give us our heading of the plane. It would be this way, this way. But we also need to be able to solve for this, I'm going to call it, I guess, P for the planes part. And so we do need to, in this, 212 is our whole speed, this whole piece, OK? But we need some things to help us. We need to get us into this triangle. So we need this part. Is there any reason that we would need this part? Yes, yes. Yes, why would we need this part? Um, so, you can get the, uh, x side. so we can, well, so the x side, sure, because they're going to be the same. But why else can anybody see why we would need this piece in order to help us with this triangle? Oh, yeah? We do have a right triangle, and yeah, that's really super important. Yep. But why would we need the Y? If I want to deal with this triangle, we already determined that we're going to be able to easily find the X. So we'll be able to find this part of the triangle. But what other part are we going to be missing in order to be able to do calculations up here? Yep. Yeah, it is one of those sides. So this side, based from theta, is going to be, this side will be the adjacent. This side will be the hypotenuse. So we need to be able to find how big the opposite side is. And so how is finding y going to help us to find this opposite side? Oh, you can subtract y from, all right, t12. <laughs> there we go. OK, good. Yay. All right. So. I was. I wanted you to figure it out rather than have me just blurt out the answer. So, um, good. So we're going to have to find y so that we can subtract it from the 212. So let's start off by finding x and y. So how do we find x and y? We can use sine. Sure, sine of 45 equals equals what over what? x over 45, so it's 45 sine 45. Anybody concur with, concur with that? Thirty-one point thirty-one point eight. so everybody's concurring, but just for our folks at home, let's just do this and show it. So 45, yep, making sure that it is in degrees rather than radians. 45 sine 45. And you're all right, 31.8. 31.8. So this one's 31.8. And I'm just going to go ahead and erase it and turn it into 31.8. For lack of space, 31.8. How do we find y? We can, do, uh, we can, but there's an easier way for y in this case. Easier way for y in this case, because it's 45. So if it's 45, how many is this? Good. It's the same thing. So this one's 31.8. You Keep in mind that you might need to use cosine if it's not 45, but this one is 31.8 also. Because 45, 45, 90, and the, the two sides up opposite of the 45s have to be the same. So 31.8 from here to here, 212 from here to here. And what did you say we needed to do? Subtract. So 212 minus 31.8, 180.2. So this side right here, 180.2. 
All right, so I've got my 31.8 and I've got my 180.2, and we need to find our direction and we need to find our magnitude. Let's use Pythagorean theorem. So 31.8 squared plus which one? 180.2 squared equals p squared because we're talking about the plane. So let's go ahead and do that. You could do it all in one swoop, but just for the sake of doing this. 182.9. Okay, let's do this and just, I'm going to get some steps in here for just in case, because I can't answer questions, so they have to see everything. Plus 180.2. Okay, oops, wrong one, equals, so we have three, uh, we have that value that we got, and then we can square root the answer, we'll square root the answer, and we got 182.98, which gives you 183, everybody got that, so 183. 183, and our unit for that would be meters per second. Okay, so that's the plane's speed. That's just how fast. And the direction that we would head it, we need to find theta. Theta we use, good, tangent, which turns into inverse tangent, sure. So tangent of theta equals what over what? Good, 180.2 over 31.8. And so, just as was pointed out, we use inverse tangent of 180.2. Is it 80 exactly? It rounds up to 80, so let's do that because sometimes people m make mistakes on the rounding. So let's just do that. Not doubting you one little bit, but just so that people at home can see. So inverse tangent like that, and 79.99 does round up to 80, exact, yep. Because tenths place, here we go. Oh my goodness. So 80 degrees, so 80 degrees, we gotta get our direction here, so we've got our full answer would be 183 meters per second at 80 degrees something of something. I'm hearing a, a few different things. North of east. East, east, north. Here's our, here's our things that made it up. Here's east, but then north modifies it. So east of, no, north of east, east of, north of east. I said it backwards, or I write it backwards. So north of east, because east is modified by the north, north of east. So 183 meters per second at 80 degrees north of east, east, north. And then that's it, that's it for the chapter. So yay, yay soccer team, and have a good time, and we'll see you back. We'll Dan says, say that exactly same thing again. Hi, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> we love you all.